Oh, shit. All right, guys. Welcome back. We got another pay-per-view review here. Let me try to fix this uh, a little bit better. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, Mad Viking back. We got Hell in the Cell this weekend. Almost, almost totally forgot. Should have shot this off already, or at least posted this video. But better late than never. So this is, of course, the kickoff match for Hell in the Cell. Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin, Zack Ryder, and uh, geez. why am I not remembering this guy's name anymore? Um, blah, 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 blah. The hype bros, whatever. It'll come to me later. It comes to me later, of course, but I'm never recording when I can remember that guy's name. Um, first off, I'll just get to say this. I'm disappointed Shelton Benjamin is in this tag team. Uh, I envisioned great things when they brought him back. Hopefully this doesn't last long. He should be getting a singles push. Um, everybody said he was the most underused talent when they had him. I thought they were bringing him back to rectify the situation, not to use him as enhancement talent. Uh, but whatever. Even Zack Ryder... It's like, when was Zack Ryder's last push? The last bone thrown his way was what? When he got the IC title on a whim, lost the next night to The Miz, what was that, two years ago? Three years ago? I mean, I know there's he doesn't have many options outside the WWE, but man, you could still go to Mexico and Japan. There's like eight feds in Japan alone, and they're all super huge. It's just like, I don't know, man. Do you want a career or do you want money? You, do you want a lineage? Do you want title history? Or do you just want money? And I guarantee you they're not even paying him that much money. I would just like to see Zack Ryder do bigger things. Same thing with Shelton Benjamin. But anyway, it's Chad Gable. I already went through that. Kickoff match. I mean, do you think... Uh, I, did I watch SmackDown yesterday? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm fast-forwarded to it. I think mean, these guys even have a history? I don't know. That's probably why it's a kickoff match. I, I feel like Zack Ryder and the other guy have more of a angle going... Then, you know, this tag team match, but uh, I'm going to say maybe that's what pushes it over the edge. They lose and Zack Ryder and uh, Big Big McGee over there finally have their breakup. Uh, you know, it was a storyline that they were pushing months ago, but I think they're, they still tease it, the writers and the WWE. But I'm not too sure it's going to happen because, okay, they lose this this tag team. What are they down to for tag teams on SmackDown? Four? Three? Three tag teams? I mean, and Raw is just decimated. Uh, so I don't know. But I'm going to say Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable and maybe Zack Ryder and the Great White Hope, whatever his name is over there, they implode and break up as a tag team. All right, next match. Now, I, I, I pre. I know this history of this match, but are every match in this pay per view Hell in the Cell, or just certain ones, or a certain one? I know that's how you know Impact would work, but um, I know this is sort of a feud or a grudge match. I know what was it? SummerSlam Orton beat Rusev in what two seconds? Because uh, the WWE was punishing him because he cut his hair. And then uh, when he came back, Rusev, he beat Randy Orton in, in like two seconds. And that was like, what, weeks ago? If not a month ago? And so what, this is their burn-off match? It's their rubber match? You know, no, it's a tiebreaker. Um, I know Randy Orton's been crying and biatching a lot lately about his place in the company and his use as a baby face. Blah, 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 blah. Rusev is still a young talent. What's he been there three, four years? Uh, like I said, Ginger Mahal owes him uh, quite a bit because he's supposed to be the champion of that current run. So uh, what would make me think is Rusev would win? But I don't know. Like I said, Orton's been such a baby lately. I can't imagine him putting over Rusev cleanly and uh, not having something to say about it. But uh, I'm gonna I'm going to pick Rusev, Rusev, um, just because I mean Randy Orton's time it's not over, but I mean it's time to start rebuilding. I thought they were doing that with AJ, 
and um, Kevin Owens, but it seems like they just brought them in and made them instant, not bit players, but semi-main eventers. People you can throw into the main event at a whim. But there's like, what, two two main eventers really on each show? And I, I, I don't know if Orton's considered that, but I'm sure he thinks he is. But I'm picking Rusev. We'll see what happens. Oh, man. Well, this I reported was coming along uh, a few of my wrestling vlog reports back, uh, which was about a month or so, a month and a half ago, that one of Ziggler's final pushes before his contract was up was going to be against Bobby Roode. Um, I read it. The last one was supposed to be at the Starcade event that they're doing. Um I, can't, I, I do not recall watching SmackDown, so I guess I missed it last night. Did these guys finally butt heads? They must have, I guess. Or uh, uh, I've missed so much. I guess I would have to... Uh, I don't know. I guess I would have to. <laughs> I can't do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm going to have to like speed watch SmackDown, I guess, before I go to work tomorrow. Uh, or before NXT, but uh, I don't even have to debate this because Sigler's on his way out. Sigler could be going up against James Ellsworth, and James Ellsworth is going to get the victory. The WWE is going to bury him before he goes so deep, and I don't know why. It's not like Ziggler hasn't been a trooper or a company man. He's eaten a lot of shit. He's put up with a lot of people burying him, uh, and he's given them more than one chance to like uh, actually – uh, perform on their promises to him, and they just don't do it. So, like I said, I would love to see the Zigman show up in New Japan or Ring of Honor waving the BC banner, which I'm pretty sure it's probably going to happen. Um, now that he's gone, uh, Austin Aries was rumored to be joining too, and I guarantee you they both won't be joining. It's going to become a... Um, uh, an open market battle, but I think Ziggler will win. They're both multiple world champions, Austin Aries and Ziggler, but, you know, I think Ziggler's considered the bigger draw. And uh, I think he would unleash just like what Cody Rhodes has done since he's left. So, uh, anyway, like I said, glorious Bobby Roode over Dolph Ziggler in what's probably going to be a squash, squash, squ squash, squash match. I'm saying that wrong, aren't I? I don't know. Squatch. No, that's a Sasquatch. Squash match. <laughs> All right, next match on the card is AJ Styles, the United States champion versus Baron Corbin, uh, another man with supposed nuclear heat on him. Uh, but here he is getting a title shot. So maybe his push isn't over yet. Um but I don't see him winning this title, but I could be wrong, man. AJ's had it for a little bit. He's been hot potatoing it with Kevin Owens, but uh, a lot of things could come into play. Like I said, Kevin Owens could interfere and give Corbin the win to take the title off of him. Um, but I don't know. Uh, if Corbin's being buried, why would they just put a title? Well, Enzo is supposed to be getting buried, too, and here he is, the Cruiserweight champion. So, ah. Uh, Jeez, it should be a good match, this one, technically. I've seen Baron perform pretty good in the last year, and I've also seen him uh, not perform very well, but not he didn't stink the joint up, but, you know, uh, he's wrestling AJ. It's got to be a decent match. They better get enough time to put on a decent match. Let's just say that. Um, but I'm going to say AJ Styles retains. This one might come back to bite me. All right, we got The New Day versus The Usos for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Why does everybody in this picture, except for uh, is that Jimmy, look, you know, comfortably baked? <laughs> now, my thing here is uh, these titles have kind of been hot potatoed, but not really. Um, New Day's been here on SmackDown for, I don't know, have they been on there six months? Four tops? Six months? They've won the titles twice? Well, Xavier's hurt, or at least working through injury. Kofi's hurt, uh, working through injury. Biggie's really the only healthy one. Uh, do 
in all tents and purposes, should New Day still be holding those titles? No. That's why we haven't seen them doing anything since they've had these titles, because two-thirds of the team are hurt. Uh, technically, they should have been stripped of them, but then again, like I said, who uh, who is Jimmy and Jay going to fight? Who's left? Who's uh, who's over there? The Ascension, who is being buried, Fashion Files, Fashion Police. They actually had a decent fight a few months ago with Jimmy and Jay. Remember that? People actually thought they were going to win. Um, who else is over there? I mean, there's they just barely have enough on each show for a tag team division. Like I said, does it, would it hurt to bring in old names from the past, even if, like they do? Not that I want the cheerleading squad to come back, but, you know, they had the headbangers. They had them for, what, a four-month period? You know, it was nice, even though that's not the team I would bring back. You know, <laughs> But then again, who can you still dig up that wrestles? Um, I mean, I guess they could have resurrected Chuck and Billy. You know, they still both wrestle from <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they're not going to resurrect Eminem, but, you know, they've got to be able to find somebody in the last five to ten years that could come back and perform, you know, for a little bit. But, anyways, I'm ranting. New Day should not win this match at all. Period. They're hurt. I don't care if they're popular. They The Usos should beat the P out of them. And uh, the New Day needs to sc- uh, run off for a bit, or at least Biggie. Can have some single matches, and they they need to they need to heal up, and then they can come back and carry this feud on. But um, like I said, there's no reason for th- three guys to be holding tag team titles when only one of them can wrestle. So I'm going to say Jay and Jimmy Uso need to win the titles. Oh, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie. This is a very good photo of her. She almost looks like a different woman. Um, how long she had that belt? Two months. Uh, I originally read this is like really one of her a uh, bone being thrown her way, so to speak, by the WWE because they plan on not resigning her when her contract ends here pretty soon, within this year. Um. About a year or so ago, she was saying she didn't plan on re, uh, re-signing the WWE, but that was because she planned on spending more time with her husband, who recently got a job in the WWE as a road agent. So her plans have probably changed on that, on wanting to retire. Um, like I said in my last wrestling vlog report, the WWE signed a bunch of new women. And NXT's got probably 30 of them already there. I mean, uh, there's going to be a changing of the harem on both shows. Um, How deep is it going to go? I mean, uh, Tamina really should go. Alicia Fox should really go. Summer Rae is still on the roster somewhere, collecting a paycheck. I mean, she can go. The WWE, I think, for all purposes... There is bringing back Paige, but I think Paige is at this point a blemish, and she's going to come back to bite them in the butt at some point again. I don't think she wants to be in the company. She's just playing nice, right? She's been getting paid this whole time. She's under contract. I mean, Paige could be let go, even though uh, they see huge dollar signs in her. Um, Like I said, some women are going to be let go. Uh to make room for some new ones. Asuka's coming up. Um, you know, I think, yeah, she's the only new one coming up, but and she's going to SmackDown, which would be cool. But like I said, I don't know. Though, yeah, I'm ranting again. <sighs> I hope it's not true. Well, I, like I said, I've already reported on this purge, and I've heard it more than once on the Internet. Um, it's not going to be a huge purge, but like I said, some women are going to be gone, two to maybe four. But maybe it's going to be an NXT partial purge, too. There's a lot of chicks in NXT. If you saw my Dade City Female Battle Royal on my um, on my page, how many girls were in that? 20? 30? Um, not all those. And I hadn't seen a lot of those girls ever before. Uh, some of those girls I have, and obviously the ones the WWE are interested in, they were entered into the May Young Classic, like Bianca Belair. I don't watch NXTs. I only watch the pay-per-views if something strikes my attention. I thought Bianca Belair was already a huge part of NXT. She's always on a house show. 
Uh, but apparently she was introduced in the May Young Classic as uh, somebody new. I've been watching her on NXT house shows for almost a year and a half. So, you know, there's chicks like that. But um, I don't know. Maybe, like I said, there could be some NXT chicks getting kicked out, too. You never know. Out with the old, out with the, the not working, in with the new. And there were some girls in NXT that just, I don't know, they didn't look like they had WWE-type bodies that, uh, you know, they were big girls that had names somewhere else, but they, you know, aren't what the WWE sells to us. Let's just say that. Uh, and I'm not going to throw out names. But, like I said, ranting here. I hope they don't pull do this and do a one and done. Charlotte's had a hell of a run in the last year and a half, two years. I mean, it was hot potatoed with her on Raw, the title. I mean, this is... Natty's, what, second belt ever in, what, 10 years? However long she's been there. I mean, she's probably the most technically sound wrestler they have, female-wise. She was, I've said this before, she was the one training Charlotte in NXT. When Charlotte, when Natalie was gone off TV for all, the, all, the, all that time, how many years ago, she was wrestling Charlotte on a regular basis and training with her in the Performance Center. She has a lot to think because of Char- uh, because of Natalie. So, you know, I don't know why I've had such a soft spot for Natalie, but I, I, I guess it's because I know she's been just taken advantage of and screwed over. She was not enhancement talent. She was what they would call the working hand. She's the one that's got the talent. She's been put over. She's a star, but she doesn't need a belt. She's the one that makes... The upcoming future stars look like stars on their way up. You get what I'm saying? Like Jake the Snake used to be that guy back in the day. Um, uh, you, you get what I'm saying? I can keep going. But I'm, I, like I said, I hope it's not one and done. They could do this another month or so, man. But um, I know the belt's coming off her at some point, but I just don't want it to be this pay-per-view. Uh, but I'm going to... I'm going to say Charlotte wins. I just don't want it to happen this pay-per-view. Charlotte over Natalia. That was a huge rant. Okay. Now, this has been a really weird feud, right? Uh, we haven't seen Shinsuke, other than this last week, uh, on TV for weeks. The WWE acts like he's not getting over with the fans, which is total BS. He's 100% over with the fans. I think the WWE is trying to cool us on him because he's so he's red hot explosive right now. He, he was literally probably the number two, if not number one guy in the company like this time last month. <coughs> but there's all these online reports about how the WWE thinks he's not connected with the fans and nobody knows who his character is and what he's really about. I'm like, it's total BS. He's totally over with the fans. Yeah. Uh, what are we supposed to know about him? <laughs> we know he's a talented athlete. He can wrestle like there's no tomorrow, and he kicks butt. I mean, what are we supposed to know about him? That he likes long watches, long walks on the beach? I mean, like I said, I think the WWE is kind of cooling him off and burying him without burying him. He was supposed to already have that title around his waist. Um uh, and the way Jinder has been booked, he's basically they're basically booking Jinder Mahal like they used like they booked um, JBL back in the day. JBL had racist angle after racist angle after racist angle, and what was it after the Punjabi prison match? I did read that Jinder was going to have the belt for a while for a few months. Well, what's it been? Two months. Um, he was supposed, like I said. Shinsuke was supposed to win the last time these guys fought. That's what's making me think Shinsuke is going to win here. But, I don't know. If the WWE is burying a guy, or at least pulling him off a of TV, why would they throw a title on him? You know? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, that's who I'm going to pick, though, even though I have a feeling... Well, it is a Hell in the Cell match. Those little midgets can't get in. I think this is a Hell in the Cell match, right? I mean, I keep looking, but they don't tell you which one's an actual Hell in the Cell match. So, the, unless they are all in Hell in the Cell, like they, I think they're going to be. So, 
that's why I'm going to say Shinsuke Nakamura, but I'm not going to be shocked one bit if Jinder Mahal somehow gets the victory. But I think it's Shinsuke's time. Jinder's had a good run. Hopefully it's not his last. He should have at least one victory, though, where he hadn't had to cheat to win so despicably. So despicably. It did... This title run has done nothing for him. But that's how JBL won. Like I said, when I'm watching this, I feel like I'm watching JBL's title run from whatever year that was back in the day. He won every single match, pay-per-view match, in such deplorable and despicable... I wanted to murder JBL physically back then. No joke. I was so tough because he had the belt for, what, a year, a little over a year? Every match, it was some bull-ass cheating. But, um... Hopefully this is not what we're going to witness. I don't think Jinder Mahal is getting a year-long run, but he's had a good run. And I think this is good for him. Like I said, I've said in the past, it's elevated a guy, at least his semi-main event status. So if he loses on Sunday, it's not the end of the world for him. I don't think the WWE just put him back in the toy box and bury him again. But, I mean, they I can't say they did that with The Miz, but they kind of did. The Miz is just climbing his way out. Um, but anyway, like I said, Shinsuke Nakamura. Actually, I really need to get like, uh, <laughs> what is it? A, a, a vlog or something going. I could talk forever about wrestling. But anyway, all right. Shinsuke over gender, but I won't be shocked if gender somehow retains. A podcast. A podcast is what I was saying. But I... Uh, I probably have an easier time drawing a podcast than I would subscribers to my channel, but whatever. <laughs> this is a false count anywhere Hell in the Cell match. Um, well, what we know about Shane is Shane likes to climb things really high and jump off of them. So I'm sure that's going to carry on uh, in this match in some form or fashion. Where he's going to be thrown through something or, you know, something ridiculous is planned. Um <sighs> I'm a Shane fan, but man, this dude does not know how to throw a working punch. He he looks when he goes off on like Kevin Owens in these promos, he looks so ridiculously bad. It's not even funny. Even when he was fighting AJ, and I mean, this guy trains. He's they show videos of him training and boxing and doing MMA. He throws punches like an unprofessional like child or girl. It just. Like I said, I like Shane. I, that's the only McMahon I can tolerate. It's just, man. And the, he's been pushing himself on so much stuff recently. It's just, like I said, when you watch the promo for Hell in the Cell, you're going to see what I mean, man. He cannot throw working punches. He cannot make it look like he's a legit fighter. And, you know, he's there because he's a McMahon, and they're all, they all want their hand in the cookie jar, even though they're all on the payroll already. They want their bonus checks. But this should be a good pay-per-view. I mean, a good match, um, a good brawl, considering that he beat up Vince and he got put over like that, old school wrestler uh, fan in me says, he's got something common, something big. I've read that this feud is supposed to lead to the return of Triple H and Stephanie on TV, which is, ugh, has me eye rolling. I can imagine them coming out. I can imagine Triple H getting involved. I can imagine uh, Vince McMahon coming down, too, and all of them stomping Owen silly in the cage. Uh, something is going to happen. I can guarantee you some McMahon, some wrestler, somebody is getting involved in this match. And Shane's going to jump off the cage and jump on top of them at some point, I'm sure, too. Um, ugh. A loss like this to Kevin Owens wouldn't really affect his career. No one takes any McMahon seriously. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. I see Shane somehow winning, but I hope this doesn't affect Owens' push. Even if Shane wins this match, it shouldn't be the end of the feud in my eyes. Owens should become like Stone Cold at this point. And be hunting down the McMahons every chance he gets. Crippling Shane. If he loses here, he gets revenge on Shane. And Shane disappears for a while off of TV. While Stephanie and Triple H are back. That type of thing. He needs to go all stone cold on the McMahons. That would be interesting. 
but obviously it's got to be something different. Uh, like I said, I would if I was a writer, I would book that. But we'll see, man. I'm going to say Shane wins. But I can see Owens winning by DQ just because, like I said, something's going to happen. Something is going to get involved. Something, someone's going to be involved. Something is going to happen. That's why it's a Falls Count Anywhere match. They're going to leave the cage, and something's going to happen. They're going to leave the cage. Something's going to happen, and maybe somebody drags them all back into the cage, and it continues in the cage with the door locked. You know, that type of thing. We've seen that stuff happen in the past with the McMahons. So, like I said, I'm going to say Shane wins, but I'm leaving the door open to so much going on. And Owens winning with interference. Wow. Well, you got to be kidding me. I thought there was one more match. But apparently there's, this is not. This is going to be the main event match, it looks like. It's the last match on the card. So, yeah, this is going to be where all the chips are laid down. It also says in this that the fashion files are returning at the pay-per-view. So, uh, I guess we're going to finally figure out who's been attacking them. Um, FYI, I've read it's Luke, Harper, and Eric Rowan. They're supposedly being repackaged, and I say, God, please don't be doing that. I mean, which really makes no sense. The last time those two were seen, they were fighting each other on a pay-per-view, and Eric Rowan had just been repackaged with his new sheep mask, so I don't know. But that's it for now, guys. Oh, see, now that guy's name is just popping into my head. Something Riley, right? From the Hype Bros, Mojo Riley. See, that's how my brain works. I'm not even thinking about him, and it just pops into my head. I, I'm weird. But anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Uh, if I miss something, etc., tell me what you think. Hit like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Um, look for my NXT video later today. Uh, later tonight, I should say. And you will see me again on Sunday for the live uh, reactions to Hell in the Cell. So... That's it for now. This is a long, <laughs> this is a long predictions video. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, Mad Viking Out. I appreciate it. Catch you guys next time.